what league championship series you're going to go to, or since the other league's off, you, you show up here? I show up here today, and I'm going to be in New York tomorrow. Oh, so you so, have our travel schedule there. <laughs> I do have your travels, and I've been following both of you around, so that is right. I do have your travel schedule. Well, it's been a lot of fun, and, and clearly uh, all four of these teams I know you've seen play numerous times. Sure have. Throughout the entire season, Seattle, the great story, and what the Mariners were able to do during this, uh, this regular season. Well, as you both know, the playoffs have been intriguing. I mean, they've had all kinds of subplots, and uh, Yankees went back to Oakland 0-2 and rallied uh, brilliantly, and uh, you know, Seattle's won 116 games, and they're fighting for their lives, and of course, Kurt Schilling's and reminds you of Bob Gibson and Don Drysdale and a whole bunch of other guys, are all Hershiser, have had great runs. Tony Womack gone swinging and perk it to begin the inning. But can you remember a postseason in recent years? Good pitching will always dominate, and hit has really dominated in the in the postseason. Lots of 20-game winners this year. So Absolutely. With the, the era of the offense, we've still seen guys like that guy right there, Kurt Schilling, and others around the league that certainly have been able to get it done on the mound as well. No question about it. In fact, runs scored were down this year, and home runs were down. So, and and. Good pitching will always beat good hitting, and uh, but this year you're right. It's really particularly been very, very effective. Want to know to Craig Council who singled his first time up, and he looked at ball two away. Are oh, you a little under the weather right now? You got a cold? I have a cold. <laughs> I, I do have a cold. Well, you live in Milwaukee. That generally happens. Well, right? That's right. I've been traveling around, so it, uh, that hasn't helped. But uh, no, I'm feeling fine. But I do have a cold. You obviously had a chance near the end of the year, Commissioner, to see Barry Bonds. If Break the record, and you talked about how you know sometimes it's easy for people to say, "Ah, oh, heck, you know, McGuire broke it. It was a record that stood since '61. Now, only three years later, Barry Bonds breaks it." But I think you had you had the best stance on it as anybody. Everybody else or anybody else could have done this. He just happened to be the only guy that did break. It. Well, that's right, Tom. What you have to think about is, look, I, I know that uh, in between Babe Ruth in '27 and Roger Maris in '61, that was 34 years, and then it was another 37 before Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa did it. But since then, with players bigger and stronger, and there have been expand, two expansions in the 90s, and a whole series of things, in the end, Barry Bonds is the only one who's done it, and he deserves all the credit in the world for it. Roller up the first baseline, and Council goes in at first, and he's safe. He's, he's really remarkable. Did he slide his off at that one? <laughs> he may have. <laughs> Gonzalez bounces out to Chipper Jones. Council on to second base. Greg makes his year-round home now, just outside of Milwaukee. That's Still right. makes his home there in Wisconsin. Sure does. Mr. Commissioner, I, before I let you get out of here, I, I want to ask you, and it's, it's a question that everybody's talking about and wondering about, the labor situation. What is going on? What can you tell us? Well, I, what I've said, uh, Tommy and, and Steve, is that since September 11, just getting the game back, mm -hmm. changing the schedule, playoffs, we've had so many things to be concerned about. And I, I really do want to say I'm, I'm proud of everybody who's been associated. I, I hope in our own small way that we've helped the country recover from the horrific events of September 11. So we really put everything else in the back burner. And I, I'm very hopeful, you know, in my uh, baseball career, we've had eight work stoppages. And I'm, there are problems that clearly need to be addressed. But I'm very hopeful and confident we can do it in a quiet and sensitive way. And uh, so we continue the, the great popularity and renaissance that baseball is uh, going. So when the season's over, we'll get back to all that very quickly. Well, Mr. Commissioner, I know I speak for all the baseball fans and all those of us who are employed by Major League Baseball teams uh, and, and say congratulations to you and, and thank you to you in the way you handled the whole situation because I'm sure that had to be as tough a decision-making process as you've been through even more so than the 94 strike situation. Well it was it was probably the toughest thing in my 30 some years in baseball because frankly Tom and Steve I wanted to do the right thing I just I wanted us to be helpful and to, to participate in when I watched all these pregame ceremonies uh, particularly the one with with Jack Buck in St. Mm -hmm. Louis that first night back I, I knew then we had done the right thing and I knew that we had touch the the right court and, and we've continued to and I just I, I hope it'll continue obviously through the playoffs in the World Series and then then we'll get back to all the problems that face us and hopefully get them solved. Now having said that with the issues on the back burner is this not the most optimistic time for our country and for 
a, a quick settlement maybe between both sides, uh, given the fact that the country has really pulled together after the tragedies of September 11th. Well, there's no question that that, that is a strong factor, and and, uh, and I understand how people feel wherever I go, they, they, they articulate that to me. So, yes, yeah, Steve, I'm sure that's going to be a very strong factor as we move forward. We really we want to continue to help in the healing process. Two and one to Matt Williams, counsel at second base, and a breaking ball is away. Three and one to Matt Williams. Well, Mr. Commissioner, I know there are a lot of people when you come to Atlanta and anywhere around baseball you want to see, but thank you for taking the time to come up and see. Thanks, Tommy and Steve. You're doing a great job. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed you both during the playoffs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Bud Seelig, kind enough to stop by and see us here in the booth. And he'll be all over the place here in the next couple of weeks. At LCS, and then on to the World Series, which begins here on Fox next weekend. Big pitch right here for Burkett. Williams doubled his first time up. This one shot foul. Three balls and two strikes. No score. Top half of the third inning. Tommy, you wonder why John Burkett has the great ERA. This is a 3-1 pitch, a ball that you're just sitting on, but look where he throws it. A breaking ball that's down. Looks like a strike. He knows the hitter wants to be aggressive, and he throws a pitch to you that you just really can't put in play with any authority and gets you to swing at it. Three two. Just miss the inside corner. Pitch is piling up for Burkett already at 53 here in the third inning. Now Steve Finley. And he looks at strike one. Arizona through the first two games and two innings of game three with the runners in scoring position hitting 227. The Diamondbacks have been held in check by this Braves pitching staff to just three runs in the first two games. Well, we certainly saw firsthand what could happen to a team that doesn't drive in runners when they have them in scoring position. The Oakland A's just had a terrible time trying to get a hit with runners in scoring position, and they end up losing the series. Fastball away, one and one to Finley. I think a lot of people around baseball have a lot of respect for guys like Burkett, guys like Glavin. You know, you see the Schillings and the Johnsons, guys that can just blow you away, and you see the numbers that they get up there. That one hit down the left field line. It'll go to the wall. Council on his way around third. He'll score. On his way to third is Williams. They'll wave him around. The throw, no throw to the plate. Now they have Finley caught in the rundown. Chipper Jones tags him out. But Steve Finley with a two-out, two-run double to left. A big base hit for Arizona. And you know, Tommy, a lot of people will say that's a big mistake there, but Finley's going to trade the out for the run right there. If they throw the ball to home, maybe they have a better chance of getting Williams. So Finley delivers for the Diamondbacks. He's given Kurt Schilling a 2-0 lead. 